Hey guys, it's Miss Abdi, and in this video we're going to talk about graphing trig functions, meaning sine and cosine functions, from scratch. So on your screen you see the five steps for graphing your trig function. So if you can, pause this video, if you haven't already, and take down these steps before I switch to the next slide. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and start with our very first example. So our first example is y equals 3 sine of x. So it's important to think about that original parent function that I gave you and what is being shifted to get 3 sine of x. So first, remember the thing that you have to do is to figure out what your period is. So let me rewrite this equation. So you can tell from this equation already that the only thing that's changing here is your amplitude. This number right in the front impacts your amplitude. This number, the, the number that x on the inside of that function is multiplied by will impact your period. If there's no number right there, your period would just, your b would just be 1, right? In this case, your a is 3, your amplitude is 3, and your b, whatever impacts your period, is 1. Remember that the equation to find period is 2 pi over b. Meaning that if b is just 1, it will be 2 pi over 1, or simply 2 pi. So our period for this function is 2 pi. Looking back at our steps, we found the period. Now we have to figure out what our intervals will be. You have to divide period by 4 to figure out what your intervals will be. So your period is 2 pi. When you divide it by 4 and simplify the fraction that you have right in front of you, you should get pi over 2. So pi over 2 are your intervals, meaning when you build your table of values, you are going to increase your table of values by pi over 2 every time. So this is kind of what a classic table of values will look like. It's very smart to start with 0, and then you are going to add pi over 2 to that value every single time. So 0 plus pi over 2, pi over 2. Let's keep it super organized. Pi over 2 plus another pi over 2 gives you 2 pi over 2. And if you simplify that fraction, you'll just get pi. Pi over pi plus another pi over 2, this is our fourth table value, will give you 3 pi over 2. Remember that when you add and subtract fractions, you need a common denominator. You add another pi over 2, you should get 2 pi. So these are your table of values values. That's why I gave you these five points to evaluate and plot in those original parent functions because your most classic period value will be 2 pi. Once you figured that out, you are going to go ahead and evaluate the function. So what do I mean? Remember that your function is y equals 3 sine x. So every time you plug in a value, you are going to evaluate it at 3 sine x. So let's start with the first one, 3 sine 0. Remember, you have to go in your PEMDAS, you go inside out. You are going to evaluate the parentheses value before you multiply. So 3 times whatever sine of 0 is. 0 is 0, right? So 3 times 0 would simply be 0. Now, 3 sine of pi over 2, right? So we know 3 we're going to multiply later. We just have to figure out what sine of pi over 2 is. Thinking about your unit circle, sine of pi over 2 would be 1. And so your next table of values value would be 3. 3 sine of pi. You are evaluating what sine of pi is first. So 3 times sine of pi is 0. Your height at pi rotations is 0. Pi radians rotations is 0. That is your third point. Two more. Let's do it. 3 sine of 3 pi over 2. We have to evaluate the inside function first. 
remember that it's going to be three times, excuse me about that, negative one would just be negative three. Try two pi on your own now. Pause this video right here. See if you get the right answer. Two pi should be zero. So now back to our original steps. We found period. We have divided period over four to find our intervals. We've already used the intervals to find our table of values and we've evaluated. We plugged in x to find y values. Now you are going to graph. So we have our table of values. The first coordinate point will be at zero, zero. Your next one, Remember to label your axes. Let me do one, two, three. So this will be positive three, this will be negative three before I continue to graph. Pi over two will be up at three. Pi will be down at zero. Three pi over two will be a negative three. And two pi will be zero. So now you know a perfectly scaled way to find your table of values and be able to show the main characteristics of these curves all in one place. So the first thing you do is find your period. Then you are going to divide period by four. Then you are going to find, use that value to identify your intervals on the left. Then you are going to evaluate that function right here, four, to get your y values. And then finally, you will graph. Let's try one more example. The next example is y equals sine 2x. So this one will change our period a little bit, right? You should already see that there is no a, so your amplitude will just go back to its default, which is 1. However, your b, the number that x is multiplied by, is 2. So you have to figure out first what your period is before you can find your intervals. So your period is 2 pi over b, meaning that your period is 2 pi over 2. Therefore, your whole period, meaning one whole cycle, is pi. So we did our first step. We figured out our period. Now what we have to do is divide period by four to figure out how to find our intervals to build that table of values. So our period is pi divided by four. That is how many, how far you are going to rotate through your points to graph a nice and even function. So we've got our interval, which is pi over four. Let's go ahead and do what we usually, usually do. We start at zero. And you're just going to constantly add pi over 4 until you get to 5 total x points. So 0 plus pi over 4 is pi over 4. Pi over 4 plus another pi over 4 is 2 pi over 4. If you simplify that, you get pi over 2. If you add another pi over 4, trust me, it's 3 pi over 4. You have, if you have pi over two plus pi over four, you need a common denominator, right? So you have to multiply top and bottom by two for this guy. So basically what you're doing is two pi over four plus another pi over four, which will give you three pi over four. And then your last but not least point will be the last of your whole cycle, which is pi. Y equals sine two X. So when you evaluate it, you replace your x with the actual x value. So for your first one, it would be sine of 2 times 0. Remember your PEMDAS, you do parentheses first. So this time you are going to multiply before you evaluate it at sine. So basically what it's asking for is sine of 0, because 2 times 0 is simply 0. Sine of 0 is just 0. So that's what your value will be. So our second point, sine of 2 times pi over 4. 2 times pi over 4 is the same thing as 2 pi over 4, which simplifies to pi over 2. I know this seems like a lot. That's why I'm doing it in a video, so you can refer back to it often. So then what you have to figure out is what is sine of pi over 2. And sine of pi over 2 is 
1. Sine of 90 degrees is just 1. So that's your next point. Let's do our third point. Sine of 2 times, remember we're using this, we're evaluating it at this function. Sine of 2 times pi over 2 is simply sine of pi. 2 pi over 2's cancel out and become sine of pi. Sine of pi is 0. So you're starting to see that there is still a pattern. It's just a little bit impacted by either the period or the amplitude. Your answers should look something like this. So when you graph this function, your y values look similar. If you're thinking, what's different? It's your x values. So when you graph your function, look at your axis. If I make this notch right here, my one and my negative one, my zero, zero will be at the same place. But my pi over four, one, that means I don't go all the way to pi over two. I have to cut halfway between zero and pi over two. So my next point will happen right here at pi over four. Let me label it for you. This notch will be pi over four, comma one. At pi over two, I'll already be back at zero. At three pi over four, which is this guy right here, I'll be back down to negative one. And at pi, look at this bottom point right here, I will be back up at zero. So when I graph this function like this, the cycle is going to happen more quickly. So hopefully this gave you the tools to figure out how to graph a trig function all the way through. Let's do a quick review again. Your first step is to find period. Your second step is to divide period by four to figure out your intervals. Your third point is to use those intervals to start a table of values. Your fourth point step is to evaluate that table of values and fill it out on the right-hand side of your table. And your fifth step is to graph. Remember that when you connect the dots, your lines should be curved, there should be arrows, and all of your axes should be nice and properly labeled. Please reach out if you have any questions. I hope this was a helpful video for you.